Frontier models like GPT, Grok, Claude, and Gemini that run in data centers all over the world need something in common, power. In order to understand the magnitude of the demand in energy, we'll need to understand what it takes to train one large language model and then expand our scope to see the rest of the industry. So let's start with this one question. What does it cost to train one large language model? Most private companies don't release the exact specs on energy consumption on their AI models. So in order to understand what goes on in training a large language model, we need to start with a model that we do know to some extent by estimation, and that's OpenAI's GPT-4. GPT-4 is assumed to be 1.7 trillion parameter model that was pre-trained on 13 trillion tokens of data, which required around 20 septillion floating point operations. Meaning in order to train this giant model, OpenAI likely used up to 25,000 A100 GPUs that in total took them about three months to train. And each of these A100 GPUs consumes up to 400 watts of power. And once you stack 25,000 of them, the energy demand starts to add up really fast. Typically, when we have that many GPUs working at the same time, the challenge is how we can actually parallelize the training efficiently. So similar to how having 25,000 chefs making one giant meal at once, you need an efficient way to group them in a way that maximizes the type of work ahead. And in the case of large language models, the type of work we need to do is matrix operations, specifically what's called matmol or matrix multiplications. If you have to do a matrix multiplication of 100,000 by 100,000, the total number of operations required for this is around 2.5 quadrillion floating point operations or two times 10 to the power of 15 flops. To do that many mathematical operations, you can use one single GPU to solve this, but that would probably take you a very long time. But maybe you could group multiple GPUs at once and make it go faster. But the ultimate question is this, if I have 25,000 GPUs available, do I just group all 25,000 GPUs in one and hit the go button? Typically in AI training, Nvidia chips are grouped in eight. So for the A100 GPUs, you can group eight of them into a single hardware topology called Nvidia HGX server that looks something like this. And one HGX server that holds eight A100 GPUs consume up to three to six kilowatts. And keep in mind that the HGX A100 unit is considered to be an older hardware as the industry now moved on to hopper architecture like HGX H100 or even Blackwell architecture like HGX B200, which draws up more than 10 kilowatts. But these are newer architecture. So even though it draws up more power, you'll need less of them since the chip itself is faster and efficient in comparison to the A100 GPUs. In any case, now that we have one NVIDIA HGX that has eight A100 GPUs, instead of running the 100,000 by 100,000 tensor operations with one single GPU, you can now parallelize this tensor operation by using one HGX server that has eight GPUs installed. And the protocol that allows this communication between eight NVIDIA GPUs is called NVLink. NVLink was introduced back in 2014 as a protocol that helps this exact scenario, being able to parallelize tensor operations so that in this case, the 100,000 by 100,000 matrix operation can be shared across eight GPUs to run in parallel. And you might be asking, I mean, why stop at one HGX server? We're in America, so let's go big and stack up a hundred of these and go get some bacon. While grouping eight GPUs in one topology of hardware is made possible by using NVLink protocol, stacking multiple of these HGX servers starts to make less sense because of what's called interconnect. Meaning as you extend beyond high-speed mesh within one internal mesh of GPUs, the interconnect bandwidth and latency between nodes can can often lead to diminishing returns. However, one clever way to get around this is by putting the focus on the model architecture. Meaning instead of trying to make the tensor operations more parallel, we can also find parallelism from the model architecture. For example, GPT-4 is thought to have 120 layers of neural network. And just like earlier, we can parallelize not just on the tensor level, but also on the architectural level as well. We can divide up the neural network into 15 pipelines and each pipeline dedicates one HGX server so that now eight GPUs can essentially parallelize the tensor operations accordingly. So a simple math tells us that 15 pipelines with eight GPUs each comes to 120 GPUs that can run one instance of GPT-4. One question you might have here is that why don't we just dedicate one HGX server for each layer of the GPT-4? And that's mostly because every layer varies in sizes. So we don't want to get to underutilizing a dedicated HGX server for a very small layer. And now that we have tensor parallelism and pipeline parallelism done, the question is this. OpenAI had 25,000 GPUs, but we saw that one single instance of GPT-4 can practically run on 120 GPUs. 
GPUs. What do we do with the remaining 24,880 GPUs that's sitting idle? In order to parallelize between each instances of GPT-4, we can add another parallelism done, but now on the data. In other words, data parallelism. For training, you can essentially replicate the GPT-4 model hundreds of times and basically batch process the 13 trillion tokens for pre-training. And once all this pre-training is completed, you can use different gradient algorithms to average out the weights between all those instances. Since we have around 25,000 GPUs available to train GPT-4, and each GPT-4 instance that trains needs around 120 GPUs, a simple math shows us that we can have up to around 200 replications of the GPT-4, and now we're utilizing all 25,000 GPUs to pre-train the GPT-4 model. Now that we understand why we need this much GPUs to train one large language model, let's get to the heart of the video, which is energy. Since one HGX server can connect eight GPUs, in order to run all 25,000 A100 GPUs, we need around 3,125 of these HGX servers. And each HGX server consumes up to around 6.5 kilowatts. And we saw that from earlier, training GPT-4 required 20 septillion floating point operations that took about three months, given their infrastructure of 3,125 HGX servers. So we have 6.5 kilowatts times 24 hours times 90 days times 3,125 server, which brings up to around 43,875,000 kilowatt hours or 44,000 gigawatt hours, give or take. To put that into perspective, that's about what a small city of 50,000 people consume in a month. So if you think about it from this chart, each dot here that shows a model could easily represent energy spent for training equivalent to a small city's monthly energy consumption. And keep in mind that the GPT-4 model is from back in 2023. And since then, we have seen a huge improvement in infrastructure, interconnect protocols, and also the underlying AI model architecture. And all of these could improve the energy demand to train the model. But training is only a portion of the total energy that's needed for the AI model. Meaning deploying the train model to production to be used by general public to make inference requires more energy than what we just saw in the training energy demands. So the next natural question is this, how much electricity is needed to actually run these AI models in production? But first, let's talk about jobs from Woven. I've been looking to hire a software developer in my previous company. And one thing I always found was that candidates always had different skill sets. And some people were really good at code reviews and others were good at system debugging. And now with AI, agentic programming. So coming up with coding evaluations for each role took a lot of time and effort to build scenarios and give feedback. It just wasn't fun for everyone involved in the process. Woven is a human powered technical assessment tool that makes hiring streamlined. So if you're looking to hire engineers, Woven is offering 14 days free trial with 20% off of your first hire. Check the link in the description. Okay, back to the question. How much energy is needed to run these AI models? OpenAI is projected to have more than 700 million weekly active users using ChatGPT. So if we were to use the earlier GPT-4 model, the GPT-4 model is estimated to run on a cluster of 128 GPUs. So using the same math we used earlier for training, we have eight GPU tensor parallelism in one server connected by NVLink with 16-way pipeline parallelism, we find that we can now run the GPT-4 model in production using 128 GPUs. But that's just one instance of GPT-4 running, meaning to service the 700 million active users that use ChatGPT, we're going to need a lot more computing, which means a lot more power. OpenAI now receives over 2.5 billion prompts per day, and the energy consumption for processing one single query with GPT-4 can spend around 0.3 watt hours, although that depends on the type of work. But if we project out how much energy this might need, 2.5 billion prompts with 0.3 watt hours brings us to 750 megawatt hours per day just in energy cost. In comparison to earlier math, where training the GPT-4 model for 90 days costs around 44 gigawatt hours in total, deploying the GPT-4 for 700 million users that runs 2.5 billion prompts per day at 0.3 watt hours, we come to the total number of around 67 gigawatt hours for 90 days of serving GPT-4 on ChatGPT. And keep in mind that AI companies typically serve multiple AI models rather than just one. For example, Anthropic serves Cloud for Sonnet, Cloud for Opus, as well as backwards compatible models like Cloud 3.7, 3.5, and more. So you can see why the energy needed here is compounding really fast. And not only in training, but more importantly, in running the models. Another energy overhead that goes into both training and deploying these models is cooling. And this is measured in a metric called power usage effectiveness, or PUE. Essentially, for every wattage that we use in a data center, what multiple do you need to consider when you're using cooling? So for OpenAI, the GPT-4 model could have had 
had a PUE of let's say 1.2, which brings our energy consumption in training from 44 gigawatt hour to 52.8 gigawatt hour. And the energy consumption for the deployment of the model goes from 67 gigawatt hours in 90 days of serving 700 million users to 80 gigawatt hours. Back in 2023, we saw 176 terawatt hours from data center usages, which represents around 4.4% of the entire US electricity consumption. And what's crazy is that this number is expected to grow. By the year 2030, some projections have been made for up to 8 to 10% of the entire US electricity, though not all of these goes towards AI. But whether the projection is right or wrong, one thing for sure is that we're going to need a lot more power to support this. XAI, for this reason, bought up more than 30 methane turbines to power their Colossus facility in Memphis. OpenAI is projected to build their Stargate facility that would have capacity for up to 5 gigawatts that can power up to 400,000 GB200 GPU, which is the superior to the H100 GPUs that we use today. Meta is building out natural gas power plants and Google is expanding their hyperscale data centers to continue growing. And it hasn't exactly been easy for these companies to fight against permits and local governments that are pushing back due to concerns about straining local infrastructures that ends up in lawsuits. For example, XAI is getting complaints for using methanes as a source of electricity and circumventing the local permits. Meta, instead of relying on existing utilities, they're trying to generate electricity themselves. Google is getting pushbacks from utilities and local governments on their expansion plan for the hyperscale data centers nationwide. Meanwhile, China's energy build-out has mostly been centralized to state level, which allows them to outpace US's heavily regulated energy supply. Some go as far as saying that China has an oversupply of energy. By 2023, China installed over 609 gigawatts of solar and 441 gigawatts of wind. They have 27 reactors under construction for expanding their nuclear power. And China's energy capacity just seems to grow more and more each day. So we're seeing US energy infrastructure primarily driven by private corporations, while China is being driven by government states, essentially sidestepping potential bureaucracies that get in the way. Meanwhile, AI competition is getting more and more fierce, but thankfully, energy alone isn't the bottleneck, but it is one critical piece that helps drive innovation in AI. While there are other factors like advanced chips like GB200 GPUs or better model architectures like mixture of experts, quantization, and speculative decoding, or improved training methodologies that can help reduce energy costs to train and deploy AI models. But all in all, energy supply needs to grow with it and underpin the innovation, which requires more power generations, better grade system to efficiently transfer energy, and better water cooling system for the chips, all of which play into the factor of determining who will come out on top of the AI race.